I end up getting a phone call from student health telling me that I tested positive. Being at the Globe for, for quarantine felt like jail. Y'all have so many people in these dorms that you have to make people room together. So I'm, I'm literally locked out. I am locked out right now. I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. I'm just out. Like I can't, I can't do a robot. Can't have friends or family members bring me food. I, I'm not allowed to go downstairs myself and get food. I'm not allowed to go warm up my food if it gets if it gets too cold. I was in a constant state of hunger. And I just was like, I was so, so miserable. When I tell you, like trying to keep a positive mindset throughout that whole thing was really, really hard. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Brie. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another video. This one is going to be a long one. I can promise you. Get your snacks. <clears throat> get your get your water. Not Dasani though. Um, yeah, for those of y'all who don't go to George Mason. Um, I believe George Mason has like a, a Pepsi. Is it Pepsi or Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola. Um, they have a uh, partnership with them. And so literally the only water that you can get on campus is Dasani and it's huh, horrible. Um, and also my dorm doesn't have a water fountain either. So hmm, that's great. Um, but yeah, um, outside of that, so this video finna be long. Um, I have been waiting to talk about this for a cool minute. And I low key wanted to wait until I was already like pretty much done with school. To talk about it because again people be getting salty and in their feelings when i say anything negative about george mason even if i am telling the guy honest truth and so i kind of wanted to wait <laughs> until i was pretty much like done or whatever and so um yeah but yeah basically i am here to talk about something that occurred my very first week of this semester spring 2022 um, so basically, as you can see from the title, I caught COVID the first week of school. Now, if you guys remember, when it came to coming back to school from, um, Christmas break, but yeah, so I caught COVID the very first week of school. And if you guys remember, um, when it came to uh, coming back to campus, um, there was a whole thing about doing these at-home COVID tests, right? Uh, Mason had partnered with, I think it was Vault, and they basically administered at-home COVID tests where you basically uh, spit into the tube and you're being monitored um, over video. And so the way this process was supposed to go was that you um, put your spit in the tube or whatever, you send it off, and it was supposed to have gotten there in time enough to where they can let you know if you're positive or negative before coming back to campus. Of course, things didn't go as planned, and people's COVID tests were not coming back, um, or they weren't getting the results back in time. They said that, you know, the tests weren't going to get delivered. Because it, it literally was like, you know, you had to get it delivered back to them by a certain date. And pretty much almost everyone's orders were was delayed. And so the way that Mason handled this <laughs> was to say, oh, you know, it's fine. As long as you show them. Because it, how it was supposed to go is that you were supposed to have gotten an email saying, um, luckily, that you were negative. You just tested negative for it. And then you showed that negative result to the person when you're checking back in um, to get back into your dorm and then you're allowed access. But because of the delays in the in the test, they instead changed it to, oh, if you just have the email saying that you shipped it off, you're good to go. And I knew from the, I knew from then that that was a bad <laughs> idea because that means people could show up to campus and have COVID and not know. But because they have the shipping notification, that means that they are allowed to come back on campus. That literally doesn't make any sense. And I knew, I knew then that that was a bad idea. But hey, what can I do about it? I'm only a student. 
And so, and I was also one of those ones that um, had received or that was delayed with the test results. And so basically um, I was able to move in even though I didn't have my test result yet. And I think I got my test result either that day or the next day and it said negative. So I was, I was fine. Like I didn't get a positive result. Like I was cool, right? So, you know, move in and mind you, move in is a very hectic time. There's a lot of people around. And I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of nervous with moving because I'm like, there's all these, like I would have felt so much better if the tests went the way that they were supposed to go. And I knew that everybody in the room had to have gotten a negative result to even be in that room. I would have felt so much better. But knowing that any and anyone, any and everyone, well not any everyone, but anyone in that room could have had a, could have been positive with COVID and no one knew. I just was going off of faith at that point. And so that's moving. We get to the first week of school um, and I haven't done much at this point. Um, during that week, the only time, because even to like, I was real like, y'all yeah, know me, I always took COVID very, very seriously. And I was always those one, I was always the one side-eyeing people that was like out and about when COVID was first a thing. Cause I'm like, what are you doing? Um, and so I was very cautious about going anywhere. And I was very, 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 very um, heavy on wearing my mask. Even now that the mandate has been, has been lifted at the school, I still make it a point to wear my mask indoors. And so, you know, I'm staying heavily masked up. I'm, you know, doing my hand sanitizer like I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, the first time that I went out that whole week, so anywhere like really like public, was the dining hall. I went to Southside with some friends and that was like my first time really being, well, outside of moving, that was my first time really being in like a big crowd, right? And so, you know, I'm eating at Southside, you know, and everything's fine, everything's great. I don't feel no kind of way. I don't have no symptoms, nothing. We get to like Thursday. My, again, this is the first week of the semester. It's like the end of January, the first week of the semester. It's like Thursday and I start feeling sick and I'm like, and mind you, um, you know, like the first week of school or whatever, or like the first couple of weeks, they make you take a COVID test. Right. And so Thursday comes or take a COVID test weekly. Thursday comes, I start feeling some symptoms. I kind of start feeling under the weather and I'm like, hmm. Uh, this is alarming because anytime you start to feel sick, I feel like your mind immediately goes to, oh shoot, is it COVID? And so, but I'm not really thinking too much of it because it's just a little like little mucus in the throat, um, a little, a little soreness, but it's not anything serious. Like it just feels like a, like a little, a minor cold maybe. And so I wasn't really thinking anything of it. The symptoms started getting worse and worse and worse and the way that the COVID tests are set up you have to take it um so you have to take it like you, you're required to take it at least once a week and Friday is like your cutoff and if you don't take it by Friday then you get hold you get held accountable by student conduct for not abiding by the rules and so it's Friday morning I wake up feeling awful I feel awful I literally, I start feeling like those heavy symptoms of like um, feeling hot and cold, my throat's hurting, and I started having the shakes a little bit too. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not happening. And I was still holding on to hope that it wasn't COVID, but literally everything was pointing to me having COVID. And so... I'm literally struggling to get out the bed. Like I'm literally just like holding on <laughs> to dear life. And um, my boyfriend at the time was just like, you know, like, are you sure you want to go get this COVID test? Because again, it's like, it's the last day. It's Friday. They closed the clinic at like five o'clock. I'm like, I have to get this COVID test in or I'm going to go to student conduct. And y'all know, again, I'm very about the rules and I don't want to break the rules and so I'm like you know it's okay like you know I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go because when I tell you like I looked physically ill 
Um, I was very, very dizzy. Like, literally getting up from my bed to go to the mini fridge was, like, hard. Like, even just, like, yeah, like, even just, like, getting up to do my homework was, like, like, I, I couldn't physically get myself to, like, get up, go get my laptop, and, like, like, it was that bad. I felt that bad. And I wanted to stay in the bed so bad, but I'm like, nope, because student conduct. And so I somehow mustered up the strength to go get my COVID test. We both went to go get our COVID test. And I'm literally sit there, I'm spinning in the tube, and it's like really, really thick. And I'm like, yeah, there's no way this test isn't coming back positive. There's no way. And usually it takes like a day to get your COVID test results. You don't usually get them the same day. But of course, um, that day in particular, like a couple hours later, I end up getting a phone call from student health telling me that I tested positive. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. The first week of school. And again, like I was being safe. Like, there were events going on. There were people being um, really lazy with wearing their masks. Like, I know people that were going into crowds not masking up at all. Like, I was doing my part. Like, the only time I would even leave my room was to go get food. Like, I was being very, very cautious. And so I'm like, when did this happen? How did this happen? Oh, and also a quick thing too, right? So that Thursday that I started having symptoms, right, it was right after I ate Chick-fil-A. And I'm not saying that Chick-fil-A gave me COVID, but I've noticed a pattern. And let me know if any of y'all, more specifically the ones that go here, if y'all have weirdly had the same experience, but probably not. I noticed that whenever I felt sick at all, not even just COVID, but if I just felt like I was getting sick, it was always right after I ate Chick-fil-A. And I don't know if it was because of the food I don't know if it was because of any like sanitary reasons. I don't know if it was because I was using the kiosk to order my food and maybe the germs from the kiosk was getting me sick. But I kid you not, every time I felt ill, it was after I ate Chick-fil-A. Even now, like right now, I know I may not sound like it, but I do actually have like a sore throat right now. I've been feeling kind of under the weather as I'm recording this. And I started feeling this way after I ate Chick-fil-A. I don't know what it is about that specific Chick-fil-A. <laughs> But every, not every time, not every time I eat Chick-fil-A, because I eat, I eat Chick-fil-A a lot. But every time I have felt sick, like scratchy throat or under the weather, whatever, it was always after I ate Chick-fil-A, but whatever, right? So here I am, I'm trying to go back through and I'm like, okay, when and where did I catch it? Did I catch it at Chick-fil-A? Did I catch it at the dining hall where I ate at on, on Tuesday? Did I touch a doorknob? Like, how in the world did I catch it, right? And so I find out, I'm on the phone with the lady who's telling me, and I'm just kind of like, I'm, I'm stunned, I'm shook, but I'm also not that surprised. And so I'm kind of just taking it all in, I'm staying calm. And the lady, I, I felt like the lady was expecting me to be more, uh, like, emotional about it. Like, she just was like, oh, you know, you're handling this surprisingly well. Like, are you sure you're okay? Like, you know, you like, you know, you don't sound like you're in distress. Like, you know, I just told you you had COVID. You know, you sound so calm about it. And I'm like, well, what do you want me to do, cry? Like, <laughs> like it sucks. Like, it really, really sucks. But I'm not going to break down on the phone. Like, okay, you're telling me I have COVID. Okay, like, all right. And so, yeah, basically, she's just telling me next step. She's like, okay, you're going to get an email from housing about you know moving into the globe and all that and I'm like oh my god this cannot be happening and so mind you I'm waiting for the email that I tested positive and I'm also waiting for the email about moving into the globe neither one of those things happened um I literally was checking my email like every 30 minutes didn't receive an email like I literally just received the phone call like the email that you get from student health saying whether or not you you test a positive or negative I, to this day, I never received it for that specific test. I only received the phone call. And she told me to wait for next steps from housing. And I'm like, okay, cool. So 
you know, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. At like 10, 11 o'clock, I'm like, okay, I'm probably not going to get an email yet. You know, I, I'm just going to keep waiting. And so just out of me um, wanting to be, um, out of me not wanting to miss anything in the event that I do get the email or whatever, because I know that, you know, if they find out, they're going to want me to move out as soon as possible. So I'm like, let me go ahead and pack my stuff up just in case. And let me just keep an eye out for whenever I get this information, right? The next day, I get an email from, it's not housing. I don't, I forgot what their role is, but I get this email from this guy who I guess is part of like the COVID health team here. And basically he sends me an email saying, um, hey, we've tried to contact you. And until you get back to us, we're revoking your access to your dorm. And I'm like, what? Y'all are revoking my access to the dorm for like, <laughs> and this is when I started getting really frustrated. Because mind you, I set my alarm for like eight, nine o'clock in the morning just because I'm like, okay, let me, let me just get up to check my email just in case. And I'm like, thank God I did. Because what do you mean you're turning off my housing? First of all, y'all never, y'all never sent me an email. Y'all never sent me any information. Y'all never reached out to me in the first place. And you're telling me that because you haven't heard from me, we're going to shut off your housing. Like, it just seems like such an extreme thing. And it's like, again, it's poor communication on their part because they never got back to me. But yeah, so I'm like... What like that's how I knew like it was like the beginning of, of bull crap. And so I email the guy back and I'm like, I literally have not heard anything from housing. I was waiting on instructions, don't know what I'm doing, where I'm going, like <laughs> you know. And so he's like, Okay, well, um, you know, I did try to call you and you didn't answer. Now I have my phone set to where unknown numbers don't get in like I don't get notified of them because I get so many spam calls on a daily basis and it is like it, it literally got really bad like it was to the point where like every like 30 even 15 minutes sometimes it'll be back to back spam calls from different numbers and I'm like I, I can't I can't do this so I have it set to where if your number is not saved in my phone I do not get notified like if it's that important you'll leave a voicemail um and so I was like, you know, go ahead and call me back. This is my number, whatever. And so I talked to him and he's, you know, he's pretty nice. Like, you know, none of these people were mean or anything. I just didn't like the way that stuff was handled. But basically he just was like going through everything, um, you know, saying everything, like saying like next steps, like, okay, like you have to like go ahead and pack up your stuff. Um, and luckily he wasn't like uh, rushing me about it. He gave me like three or four hours to pack up, even though I didn't need that much time because I had already pretty much packed up. But um, yeah, he basically was just telling me that, telling me how the whole food situation was gonna go, which I will get into that. <laughs> um, and yes, yeah, so and he's like, you know, like around like 11, 12 o'clock, just go ahead and um, move on over to the globe. Boy, oh boy. This was one of the worst <laughs> walks of my life now as I said before the COVID symptoms were hitting me like crazy like at this point I'm like sick sick um I I feel very weak um I'm very dizzy I don't feel well my throat hurts like I just don't feel good and so I am having to carry um all my luggage and it's uh drizzling it's about to rain and so, th thankfully, it wasn't pouring, but it was drizzling. And so, um, I'm having to try and... And mind you, I don't even know where the globe is. Like, this was my first time ever even, like, going to the globe or being in that area. Literally in all of my four years of college. So, I'm literally having to go to this dorm that I've never been to ever in my life. And I have to lug all of this, um, this luggage with me about um like 15 minutes from my dorm but it took me way longer than that because oh my god like 
because it, it just it was heavy right like my luggage was really really heavy like I had a hard time um just like carrying it things kept falling over like it just was awful and again like I was sick and not feeling well and I was feeling weak so me already feeling weak and sick and trying to carry heavy luggage like up a hill and in like semi bad weather it just was awful and it was hot too it was so hot and so yeah it just it was torture it was literally to the point and also um my breathing was off too like I kind of had a hard time like breathing well as well and so it literally had got to a point where I'm like I honestly don't know if I'm gonna make it to the globe like I literally had that thought I'm like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it like there were so many times where I thought I was going to pass out. Like, I felt so bad. And I'm like, this isn't fair, bro. Like, this, like, this is not fair. I do not deserve this. Um, and so, yeah. But somehow, somehow, by the, by the strength of the Lord, I was able to get to the globe. More bull, <laughs> more bull crap. So I get to the globe and basically what the guy told me on the phone was that when I got to the globe, there was going to be someone at the front desk. And when I check in, they're going to hand me an envelope with my name on it and my key, which is, which is my card to the, to the, um, new room. And, you know, I, I go from there. I get to the globe, Right. I do see someone there, but it's the person that is handing out food to the people that are already in the dorm. There's no one at the front desk. Like there's literally no one there, right? And I'm looking and I do see some envelopes, but my name isn't on any of the envelopes. So I'm like, what the heck? Like, you know, and like, I'm trying to ask the lady, she doesn't really know what's going on. And so I'm like, I'm about to call this dude again. And I don't know if the people that were in there were just like bored or whatever. But the people that were in there, like the other people that were sick, they kept like, you know, like staring at me and being all in my business. Like when I was on the phone with him, um, everyone just kept like staring at me. I'm like, bro, I'm not in the mood. Like just mind your business. That's one thing about Northern Virginia, man. People have such a staring problem up here. It's like mind your business. But anyway... So I'm, I'm calling him and I'm like, hey, I'm at the Globe. I'm at the front desk. There isn't an envelope. There isn't anything here for me. He's like, you know, did you check here? You check there? I'm like, yeah, there's there's literally nothing here for me. So he's like, okay, I'm going to get into contact with the nurse to um, see if she can help you. I'm like, okay, cool. So I wait like a good like 10 minutes and a nurse finally um, comes and, you know, she's like, you know, uh, you said that you can't find your key and I'm like, yeah, like, I don't, you know, there's nothing here. She's like, oh, this isn't you. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and so, um, she's like, okay, I'm going to see, you know, what's going on. Come to find out they, they put the key, they put the, they put the key as in this, a, a car to get into to the, uh, to the room. They put it on top of the door handle to my door. No envelope, no, like, z literally zero security measures. Literally anybody could have grabbed that card and went in the room. It wasn't, wasn't being monitored. It wasn't where they said it was going to be. It was literally out in the open. Wide out in the open, on the rested on the door handle. I'm like, are you serious? And so that's what she came back and told me. And I'm like okay all right um thanks i guess um and so i go i go up there to my doom and yeah sure enough the card is, is there and so i get in the room and initially i'm like okay the room isn't too bad and also let me backtrack too right um because i was already dealing with this whole thing of like okay i caught covid i gotta move out like all this and that um, I forgot to mention that on the phone, they told me that I might get a roommate, which I'm like, 
y'all couldn't have made the situation any worse. You're meaning to tell me not only do I have to share a room with someone else that is sick that I do not know and that I'm not comfortable with. You're also telling me that y'all have so many people in these dorms that you have to make people room together. Because that even, that wasn't the initial thing. Like when that when quarantine housing first started, it was supposed to be that everyone got their own rooms because you're quarantining. You don't want to be mixing germs and being around other people that are sick. But because they had so many people in the globe that first week, they had overcrowding issues and they had to like double, triple up in the rooms. And I'm like, this is not happening. And so I go in there. I do say that there's another bed in there, but thank the Lord, thank the Lord, I never got another roommate. That never happened because I was expecting another roommate because they, they told me I was going to have a roommate. And luckily, by the grace of the Lord, I didn't get a roommate. But, um, but that was another thing too, like the amount of COVID cases that were on this campus, the first people's school was like outrageous. Um, like it just, it just was insane how many people came and caught COVID or came with COVID. Like it just was insane. But, um, so that was my first time ever being in the globe. And I looked at the room and I was like, this is actually pretty nice. Like this is, it's giving like, it's giving like hotel. It's giving, um, yeah, like it's just, it's just a really nice room. I'm like, okay, I can, I can deal with this, I guess. Um, and I brought like bare minimum bedding. Um, which thank God I did because they give you like, so you have like the bare mattress, which you guys know how that mattress feels with no mattress pad or mattress topper. Um, and so basically I, um, so I'm, I'm given the, just the bare mattress, the sheet, a blanket, I believe in this really like. this like a uh, firm crunchy pillow just one and it's like really really flat too and the way the bed is set up there's nowhere to like elevate the the pillow because i like to sleep elevated but the way it was set up like you had to sleep like all the way down and i don't sleep well like that especially when i'm like congested and so um yeah so i brought i brought my own blanket i wasn't able to bring much I would have brought way more if I could have but I had my my blanket and I had um my stuffed animal and so you know I was like okay only a couple of days only a couple of days in here like you know and I, I when I tell you like trying to keep a positive mindset throughout that whole thing was really really hard um, cause, and I try not to let it get to me because people always say all the time that I'm like pessimistic and I, I'm always thinking negatively about things. And so that was the one time where I'm like, you know what, something like this could really break me, but you know what? I'm not going to let it. And so, you know, I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. I got to just deal with it, whatever. Um, and I won't get too deep into it, but. I will say around that time, I was expecting people that were close to me to be a little bit more um, supportive because that was a really dark, low time for me to be isolated in that room um, and to have caught COVID and even be in that situation. And I just didn't feel like I got like a whole lot of um, support whether it was like emotionally or because even like and again it's not it's not everybody um but even just because like I needed food and like you know people would always say like oh if you need anything let me know and so I would say you know hey need food or or sometimes I'm not even needing food sometimes I just needed a conversation you know like I'm stuck in that room can't go anywhere can't do anything sometimes just like talking to me would help me get through the day but it's like everyone had their stuff and was busy or I, I don't know it was weird or even people who like didn't even show concern didn't say like hey I hope you feel better I hope everything's okay like 
I'm not gonna lie, that, that does still bother me to this day that certain people didn't show any concern for me being, for having COVID. But whatever, that's besides the point. Um, back back to the story. So basically, um, day one wasn't too bad. Um, it wasn't too bad. So basically, this is when I figured out the food situation, right? And so with the food situation, uh, apparently there is a menu um, where basically every day before 10 o'clock, um, you can go on there and you can choose what meals you want for the following day. And so like if you wanted food for Wednesday, you had to make sure on Tuesday you filled out the form to let them know, right? And so, um, you know, you get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I'm not going to lie, y'all, the food... The food was awful. Like, the food was awful. Like, I would have been happy with Southside food at that point. Like, the food was awful. But not only that, and I understand this is a first world problem, but there aren't a whole lot of things that I eat. And I don't feel like I should be forced to eat food that I already don't eat. But also, it just, again, the food itself just wasn't good. Like, I tried to eat the chicken. It literally smelled horrible. Like it's it smelled like it had like expired or something. Like I just I couldn't bring myself to eat it because of how it smelled. Um literally my saving grace was like the yogurt. Um, like the little breakfast stuff, like the apple. But then I remember one time I tried to eat the apple and it was brown inside. Like the the meals that were served just were not good and they really expected you to just eat that and be okay it literally felt like jail like being being at the globe for for quarantine felt like jail i literally felt like i was in jail like it was it was horrible and so um so with the food thing right apparently it, oh my god it's it's literally so much bro okay so they tell you that you're not allowed to eat any outside food. They tell you that you aren't allowed to order food and you're not allowed to use the robots. That threw me off. Cause I'm like the, the whole purpose, not the sole purpose, but a big purpose of the robots is that in the event that you get sick, you can order food from the robot so you don't have to physically go out and get food yourself. The robot can bring you food um, to your dorm and you just go pick it up and, and get it and you know, that's that. The fact that they said no to robots, no to outside food, like you can't do Uber Eats or anything like that. And you also aren't allowed to have people come and bring you food. That was wild to me. Cause I'm like, are you serious? And then, a whole nother add a layer a layer to that right and this is another thing too the, the the biggest issue that i had with this whole thing was the communication and people not being on the same page and when i say people i mean student health and housing they were not on the same page i was getting different directions from different people and i was extremely frustrated because when it came to the food thing i was literally told and it was never put in the email either or actually, the, the email thing, because again, because there was some stuff that was said in the email, but like it ended up not being true and whatever. But all in all, um, as far as me, oh, that that's what it was. So when it came to picking up the nasty food that you had to sign up for, it literally says in the email, and I was told this over the phone, that I was allowed to go downstairs and get the food myself. I would go down there, I would give them my name, they would go to the back, get my food, bring it to me. Like I was allowed to leave my room to go get my food and that was it. One time I went to go get food and I got locked out my room, right? And so I had to call housing and I'm like, you know, hey, like, you know, I got locked out my room and they're like, okay, so you know, what room is it? What building are you in? And I was like, the globe. As soon as she heard the globe, she just gave me a hard time from there. You know, she's just like, you know, well, you're supposed to be quarantined. 
you know, you're not supposed to be leaving your room. And I'm like, I was leaving to go get my food. She's like, no, someone is supposed to go and bring your food to you. And I'm like, okay, well, I didn't know that. I wasn't told that. I just, I just went to go get my food. I'm locked out. Like, can you please bring me like another key or whatever? And so, um, you know, basically she was pretty adamant on I wasn't supposed to have left my room. But I'm like, well, how else was I supposed to get the food if no one's bringing me the food and no one's telling me? But whatever. And so I'm waiting for like a good like 30 minutes or whatever. And housing is pretty far away, so I can't even be mad at how, how long the wait was. The guy comes to let me in my room, and then he leaves with the key. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, I thought you were supposed to give me the key. You just swiped in, and then you left with the key. Like, why didn't you, like, give it to me? And so I get back to my room. I give it like an hour or so. I'm testing out my key at the door and it's still not working. So I'm like, huh. <laughs> so I'm just frustrated at this point because I'm like, y'all still didn't fix this. And so, um, and I, I still was confused about the whole like not supposed to, not supposed to um, leave your room and get food or whatever. And so I called them back again and I'm like, you know, hey, my key still isn't working. Like, you know, um, and I told them about everything and, you know, once again, it's like, oh, well, you know, you're supposed to be in hard isolation. You're not supposed to leave your room anyway. And my whole thing is like, I get that I'm not supposed to leave my room anyway, but regardless, my key is not working. <laughs> my key is not working. So it needs to be fixed regardless, but y'all are literally refusing to fix my key because I'm not supposed to be leaving anyway. And so, you know, she's explaining this to me on the phone and she's like, yeah, you know, um, you know, you're not supposed to leave or whatever. And, you know, essentially she didn't fix the key. So I'm literally sitting here and I'm like, are you meaning to tell me that I can't even go warm my food up in the microwave? Like it was on that type of thing. Like I was not allowed to do anything i wasn't allowed to go warm up my food if it got cold i wasn't allowed to fill up my water bottle and they kept housing kept claiming that there was someone that i could call or that there was supposed to be someone there that is supposed to assist us and and do all of the stuff for us so say for instance i wanted to warm up some food that there was supposed to be someone there that i could give my food to or like leave the food outside the door and they do it for me but none of that none of that was provided i was never given a number to call no one was there like actively helping people i didn't see not a single soul in that in that dorm doing anything for anyone all of the sick people that were there were walking around and doing stuff and that's when I found out that there was a difference between um, hard isolation and soft isolation. And apparently hard isolation is when they literally don't want you to step foot out the room. And a soft isolation is when you can like move around and use the microwave and stuff. But at that point, you're supposed to, once you get into soft isolation, you're that's when you're allowed to like move back into your actual dorm. And so, but I didn't know any of this. I didn't know what hard isolation was or soft isolation was. None of this was explained to me until like, I got locked out my room for getting food. So I'm over here like, okay, well, I'm kind of like screwed because there isn't anyone available to pick up the food for me and I'm not gonna starve. And so basically what I had to do was I basically um, just left my door unlocked. I like undid the lock I put something there so it wouldn't fully close anyway. And I just would continue to get my food because I'm like I'm I'm not I'm like I'm not just gonna sit up here and starve because of cause because of y'all. Like and y'all's like poor communication. And so um <clears throat> that was the thing. And then also too, I technically wasn't supposed to have anyone bring me food, but again, the food at that point just was not edible. Um and so yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I did had my boyfriend at the time sneak food <laughs> to me in the globe because yeah like I'm hungry I'm start and that was that honestly that was the biggest um thing for me 
um that was the thing that made living in the globe feel like i was living in jail and feeling like i just was like like that that it that to me is what made it hard was the lack of food um the lack of food is really what did it for me and that's what really made me break because being hungry like that and like starving for like days or like when I do eat it's like very very little and it's not enough to like sustain me it was it was hard it was really hard like I was in a constant state of hunger and I just was like I was so so miserable and it's like you guys are putting so many precautions up to where I can't get food like I can't I can't do a robot can't have friends or family members bring me food I, I'm not allowed to go downstairs myself and get food. I'm not allowed to go warm up my food if it gets if it gets too cold. It's like there were so many precautions put up for me not to be able to get food and it just led me to starve. And it just it became hell after that. Like it literally became hell and I just was I was going through it. Um and that's that's honestly partly why so it was such a dark time for me because I'm like I'm literally in here resorting to this inedible food, and that's why I got to a point where I low key had to sneak food or again I had to leave my door unlocked so I could go and warm my food up or you know get the food that I signed up for like it just it was it was such it was such a mess it was such a mess. And, um, honestly, it just was like ridiculous. And like I said, the communication just was not there, um, between housing and student health. Like I was being, I literally was told by like, I was told by student health that, and I keep saying student health, it's whoever was in charge of the COVID stuff. It, it was them. They're telling me, hey, you are allowed to move around. You can go get your food. You can do this. Even though they had me marked as um, hard isolation, which was the first five days, they told me I was allowed to do all this. They told me that my key was going to be, like, they're telling me all this stuff, and then I get in contact with housing, and they're just like, yeah, no, no, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to go anywhere, and we're not going to help you. And I just was so frustrated, right? So then finally the day I've been waiting for, because <laughs> that's another thing too. They told me that on that Wednesday that I could go get the test, the test for uh, if I'm contagious or not. And they said that once I get that test back as negative, I can move out. And so I had it set on my calendar that Wednesday was going to be the day that I get to move out of this hell hole and I and I can you know go back into my dorm peacefully so at this point my car still isn't working right because you know as I said when I was on the phone with them telling them that my phone that my card wasn't working they're just like well I don't know what to tell you because you know you're not supposed to leave so there's no point in fixing your car because it's purposely turned off so you can't go anywhere and I knew that I had my my appointment coming up so I'm like well Hopefully it works. And I remember I called them that morning too. I called them that morning to get it all sorted out um, because I knew I, I had to leave. I that I had to leave to go take my COVID test that I was registered for and that student health registered me for. And so I tried to get it all cleared up in the morning. And they literally told me to go to um, to the housing desk at Piedmont and ask them to reactivate it for me once I... Um, once I took the test or whatever. So I'm like, okay, cool. You gave me an answer and that is what I'll do. So I go to take my, um, my test to see if I'm still contagious. And you know, the walk to there wasn't too bad, but again, like I'm still sick. I'm still not feeling well, but I'll go ahead and walk over there. Right. I take my test. They tell me that. And within like 15 minutes, I'll get my results. And I'm like, say less so I, here I am like I'm excited um you know I'm like you know this probably would be the day because also too there was a chance that it was going to come back um positive and I would have had to stay there like an extra week and I was not trying to do that because I was already having such a horrible time 
And so I, um, I basically, I was like, okay, cool, great. Um, then I go to housing, like they told me to. I go to housing and I'm like, you know, hey, I, um, cause I think, did I get the email at that point? I don't think I got the email at that point. But again, on the phone, housing literally said like, just go, like they didn't even say that I needed a um a negative like test or whatever. I they literally just said go to housing to get your card fixed. That's all they said. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I get there. I'm like, you know, I explained to them. I'm like, hey, you know, my card um from the Globe is not working. I was told to come here and to get it fixed. And she's like, okay, do you have an email saying that you tested negative? And I'm like, it should be here in like, you know, a couple minutes. So she's like, okay, once you get that email that I can help you. And I'm like, okay. And so now I'm literally at a point where like, I can't go anywhere. <laughs> um, I can't, I can't go back to my room. I can't go back to the globe because I'm locked out. Um, and I can't get my car fixed because they need the email. So I'm I'm literally locked out. I am locked out right now. I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. I'm just out in in public at this point, just playing a waiting game. Then I get a phone call from Student Health, and she's like, "Hey, like I saw that your test came back, um, you know, negative. You know, here are like the next steps or whatever." And so I I was like, um, you know, I was like, "Hold on, you know, let me like step step away from for a second. Lady started freaking out. She's like, what do you mean step away? Like, you should be in your room. And I'm like, G calm down. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm out because I want to go. Because um... even she said the same thing. She was like, you know, you weren't supposed to leave. And I'm like, I left to go take my COVID test. And I, you know, called housing about my card. And then they told me to go to, to, uh, to the Piedmont desk to get it fixed. And they told me that I had to wait. Like, I'm literally explaining the whole situation to her. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I am so sorry that this happened. They were supposed to let you have access today because they should have known that you were going to go get your test today. I'm so sorry that this happened. And I'm like, yeah, like, because, the, the, again, this was something I was trying to get resolved for days. I literally have called housing, like, three days in a row trying to get this situated. But because you know, of whatever was miscommunicated, they literally refused to help me. They're just like, well, we're supposed to leave, so whatever. And so it literally took for me to, to get locked out my, locked out the dorm I'm supposed to be quarantining in and talking to this lady for her to like clear it up. And so thankfully she was able to contact housing and they re, um, they gave me access again to my room because they were supposed to give me access so I could leave and go take my test. Um, but, the, and I said that too, like I, I said that the night before and I said that that morning, I'm like, Hey, I have to go take my test at, at two o'clock. I'm going to need access so I can get back into my room. And the only answer I got was, was to just go to Piedmont desk and tell them and tell them about it. And I do that. And then it's like, you know, whatever. So, um, so we get all that cleared up with housing. Then she hits me with the news that I could move out tomorrow morning. And my heart just sank because I was so happy to have gotten out of that dorm, to have finally gotten, like, I'm not going to lie, I did get some food, um, to get food, to get, like, I was, I was so happy to finally be out that dorm because I was told that I would be able to leave that day and for me to have to stay there another night it just like again it just broke me I'm like I can't stand another day in this place I really can't um but I had to and that was probably the one time I decided to, to get up early on my own because I was allowed to move in at any point um, the next day. Literally like 8, 9 o'clock, I got myself up, made sure I was all packed up. And I just, I was ready to go. I was ready to go. I was ready to get back to my dorm. I'm like, I'm over this. My boyfriend had came. 
um, and helped me um, move all my stuff back into my dorm. And mind you, it was raining that day. But I'm like, whatever, man. As long as I'm able to get back into my dorm, <laughs> have access to food, that is all I care about. And so, um, yeah, I think... Okay, that didn't take as long as I thought to, <laughs> to talk about. But I honestly had to get that off my chest because, yeah, the way that they handled quarantine on campus was god awful and i'm not the only one that feels this way i've talked i spoke to other people who had to quarantine at the dorm it was the same thing um some people talked about uh dirty sheets that they were given um at, at the globe like and again like the quality of food like you know just and i even have friends too that have like and you, you could put on there that you have, like, dietary needs. But, yeah. Like, even their, like, vegan, vegetarian options were, like, these nasty soups. Like, it just, it, it wasn't handled well at all. And I don't know if they anticipated having that many people. Um, but, yeah, the whole that whole situation just was not handled well at all. It really made me despise coming here even more. And, honestly, I was like, but this ever happens again if this ever happens again i will just find my way back home because i had i known it was gonna be like that i would have never ever stayed at the globe um because yeah it just it just was a horrible horrible experience and like i said the communication just was not there um you know like to the like the fact that student health had to jump in and get housing to fix my car because they wouldn't was just so ridiculous um and even that whole thing about like oh no one is supposed to leave and people are supposed to come like that that was never set up that was never established that was never put in the email like if anything the email said that i am allowed to go get my own food and so you know they just weren't consistent on their end on their um with their communication and um yeah, but I will say, even though I said a whole lot about student health, they were pretty nice overall, and they did um, try to help as best as they could. Um, but yeah, they definitely needed to get on the same page because it just it was it was a mess. Um, but yeah, one thing the main the main thing that I despise about that whole thing is not only you know being in isolation and feeling like I don't have I don't have like um, or just missing that that interaction with people. But also, it was the food thing. Because um, if you know me, you know I love to eat. You know I can't go too long without eating. And so being in a constant state of hunger for like almost a week was horrible. And I'm like, I don't ever want to go through that again. And luckily, I say luckily, but luckily when you do catch COVID because it stays in your system for so long, Mason doesn't make you take another COVID test for like three months. And so I'm like, okay, well, I know for at least I know I'm good for three months. Like at least I know that not that I can't catch COVID again, but at least I don't have to worry about being tested positive for it and being put back into the globe. That was like my biggest fear. But when I found out that I pretty much didn't have to get tested again for essentially the rest of the semester, because by the time March came, it was no longer a requirement. And so I haven't I literally haven't gotten a COVID test since January. Um and it's crazy, too, because, like, I was supposed to have gotten my booster because they were forcing everyone to get boosters. But then I had gotten um, COVID. And so then they told me that um, because I had COVID, I couldn't get the um, I couldn't get the booster anymore until I was, like, you know, in the clear. And so, um, yeah, um, that that is my story <laughs> of me catching COVID the very first week of the semester and my experience being in the globe. Um yeah, again, it was just, it was awful, awful, awful. How I felt was awful. My experience there was awful. Um, my main complaint is the food, but also just the lack of communication and the lack of, um, the lack of consistency. Um, again, just not being clear on what the rules are. Um, you know, why are these people telling me one thing and these people are telling me another thing? Like, can, can we be clear? <laughs> can we be consistent across the board? Um, but also to the fact that I kept getting in trouble for things that weren't clearly communicated to me. Like you turned off my housing 
because y'all forgot to send an email or um, you turn off my card access or you don't give me access to my room anymore because I wasn't supposed to go microwave my food. Or I wasn't supposed to go pick up my food, even though it says in the email that I'm allowed to go pick up my food. Yeah, no. Um, if they continue the quarantine housing from here on out, they really need to, to rework that and fix a lot of things because yeah i know a lot of people too like they they literally could not stay there like <clears throat> they literally ended up going back home because they're just like no like this is literally living in a jail cell i can't take it and i understand that being in quarantine and being in isolation isn't supposed to be like this super nice experience but the food at least shouldn't be a problem like it shouldn't but like I said, I did what I had to do. I was desperate. I was struggling a lot in there. And so, you know, and that's low-key why, too, I decided to um, wait a while before I posted this video, um, before I exposed myself. But, yeah, I left the door unlocked, had people come bring me food. Man, listen, I wasn't about to starve to death. I, I <laughs> was not. Um, but yeah, that is my experience with the quarantine, um, housing at the globe, um, for, you know, COVID residents. Um, again, this was back in January. This was not any time recently. Okay. This was all the way back in January. I'm just deciding to talk about this now at the end of the semester. But, um, yeah, um, let me know your guys' thoughts about this whole thing um or if you happen to be one of the people that had to get put into quarantine housing how your experience was with that um and yeah if you guys enjoyed this video and was entertained by it make sure you guys give it a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in the next video